Mr. Moulton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, you said your budget priorities are near-term readiness, modernization, and support for troops and families. Those absolutely seem like the right priorities for me. Uh, Chairman, you've famously said, quote, accelerate change or lose. And of course, you're talking about our pacing China, a uh, pacing challenge, China primarily. But Mr. Secretary, you also explained that your budget, quote, dials back some modernization. Now, how is that compatible with accelerate change or lose? So those platforms that won't deliver capability before 2030 are the ones that uh, we chose not to uh, invest in in this budget. Now, we recognize that we will invest in those, uh, those programs uh, in the out years, uh, and that will require uh, an increase in the top line. Mr. Chairman, most of this committee is in wholehearted agreement that this budget is inadequate, but why would you delay modernization rather than following the lead of the Marine Corps and just cutting old systems, many of which are big and expensive to maintain? Well, that's, uh, that's part of the dialogue we have with, uh, with our Congress, and that's what we, the challenge that I see in some cases where, uh, and it, as we look at the capabilities that we have to have today, at the same time, the, uh, uh, as we transform the force to the future and uh, balance it between the two. And, and that's where the focus has been um, uh, uh, across the force. This is an area that uh, we got to continue to have dialogue of the things that we were willing to let go of so we can actually invest in and modernize in the future. And well, I, I have no doubt that this is your uh, philosophy. I, I question whether it is really the focus across the force. I mean, I think with the exception of the Marine Corps, and, and a, b a bit of credit is due to the Air Force as well here, there's been a real reluctance to divest of old platforms. I mean, I asked this question of Army leadership just last week. I said, give me an example <clears throat> of one old platform that you're cutting to make ro room for modernization. And the Secretary of the Army used the future reconnaissance attack aircraft, a future capability. She's talking about cutting a future capability. Can you give me, Mr. Secretary, just a couple of examples of old weapon systems that are big and expensive to maintain that the Army is cutting to make room for modernization? Well, certainly, uh, I mean, if you had the Secretary of the Army here to speak to that, I'm sure that uh, what she told you uh, is, is accurate, so I don't, I don't want to, I won't challenge that. But there are things like older artillery platforms like uh, the uh, M777 uh, that uh, we provided to, uh, uh, to Ukraine that we no longer uh, uh, use in our, in our inventory to the extent that we were before, that, uh, that we are, you know, that we're you know, moving out of the inventory. But s some of these things that are no longer uh, useful for the Army, uh, are useful to us in the next fight. Uh, in, uh, as far as the Army is concerned, we're able to uh, transition those, uh, those items to, uh, uh, to partners and, and allies who, who need that kind of uh, capability. Well, let's do that. I mean, let's sell them. Let's get some money, yeah. right? But we've got to make money in our budget for modernization because if, if we don't accelerate change, accelerate, not just change at the rate that we're changing right now, but accelerate change, we are not going to be able to keep up with China. And Mr. Secretary, I just want to be clear, you are endorsing the Secretary of the Army's response to my question, name an old system you're cutting, when she named a future system that you've chosen not to invest in. No, I, I, uh, the, the reason I said what I said was I, I, I really don't know the full context of, but, but to, to your point, that is a future system and not a, not a system that we would typically look to divest of. The systems that we want to divest uh, are the systems that are too too expensive to, uh, to upgrade, to modernize, or are no longer rel relevant in a future fight. Now, I mean, we, we, we live in a world where $5,000 drones can destroy $5 million tanks. Now, I'm not saying there's never going to be a use for a tank again, but we're still building a lot of tanks. Poland has just agreed to purchase a whole bunch of tanks. I don't know what, what nation they plan to invade with these largely offensive weapons, but that doesn't seem like a very wise investment for us or our allies. So I would just encourage you. I know there are a lot of tank supporters in Congress. There are a lot of F-35 supporters in Congress. But you've got to come to us with tough cuts because coming here and just saying we can't modernize is not acceptable. Replicator is a good example of a, of a revolutionary change. But when they came before the committee, I asked them, you know, Ukraine is innovating a lot on drones. Just tell me, when is the Replicator program with our GDP? going to catch up with Ukraine that has 0.7% of our GDP, and they said, at the present pace, we're not. 
We can't beat China at that rate. Gentleman's time's expired.